Hi, hello, hello, hello again. Welcome in the program, another program. This program um, is going to be about uh, money, mm -hmm. uh, how to make money, how we generate money, what money is in general. Mm -hmm. So Evita, our expert of knowledge in the quantum, quantum majesty. <laughs> So she will explain to us uh, this uh, in her way, her point of view. So please tell us. All right. So everybody wants to get rich, right? And and in the same time, the the truth about money is kept secret. Yeah, we think that money is some kind of papers with some magical pyramids or with some aliens on euros. If you actually go under. Under microscope, yeah, under microscope, you, micro, can, you yeah. can see a lot of creepy symbols out there, yes? So we think this is money. In reality, those papers have no value. We know that. It's like some, some guys with guns, basically, and bombs have Xerox copy machines, and they're printing that. And, and through media, they convinced everyone to believe that this has value, yes? So we kind of doubted our own value and our own trust. And when we trade, we, we use some magical papers, Babylonian black magic, yes, in order to trade resources. So it's time, it's like almost like allowing a middleman between us, yeah? So it's time to question that and realize that money is value itself, yes? Value that I provide, so energy that I generate, and energy the new generate and we exchange and co-create yes Our and friend. so um, we are the source of money in the same time right because if i create something in the world i create uh, something in reality yes i am the source of that creation yeah so um also um, you know in, in order to talk about money we need to look at the sexual energy because if you look at Wall Street, what is Wall Street trading really? Everything that humans desire, yes? Desire is dopamine, yeah? So basically, uh, you know, someone decided to pimp Mother Earth and resources of Mother Earth, all the crops, the, the, the gold, the jewels, the rubies, the, the human potential, yes? And decided to trade there and co co collect a cut, some kind of a middleman is taking a cut on the energy flow on Earth and a cut on what human, how humans express their desire. Yes? So sexual energy is not only that, um, you know, from tantric perspective, it's not only you desire pleasure with, with, a, with a man or with a woman. Yeah? It is also you desire new shoes or you desire a car. It's basically the energy of desire it's the energy of magnetism and it's a dance, yeah? And from tantric perspective, from quantum perspective, I would say, there is a dance that's happening between inner world and outer world, yeah? And we know we grew up being taught that there are two worlds, yes? That there's this inner, the world of what I feel, who I feel, who I am, who I know myself to be, yes, my inner life, my intuition, imagination, you know, all these things that are happening inside. And we were told that there is the outer world, yes? And we were programmed to believe that both worlds are real. That is the essence of dualism, when you think about it. That belief, that conviction that, that lures our senses, yeah, that, that the eyes, uh, uh, ears, touch, smell, yes? It lures our senses to believe that there is an outside and it's very real. And that dualistic perception of reality, even though it's very dominant in the world, it's very dominant in 3D, yes? Because you can, you know, touch spaces, you can touch things, measure them, yes? Things have dimensions and so on. That dualism has no scientific grounds. Because when, you, when in quantum laboratory, when you realize that you create reality, you create phenomena, you create matter through your observation, through your attention, then you realize, ha, huh, so what is money? I've just created that. Yes? Because just like, every, just like I create everything, in everything I am seeing, I am a source of it. 
So I am a source of money as well, right? I am the lender. Yes, the, from quantum, from, from common law, from the perspective of common law, our true law, yes, we know that it is the human being that is the lender of value, that is the source of all value. And it is, it's in the legal system, in the money mechanics system that has been, you know, has been running here on earth. It is actually translated that money is being created based on the birth certificate of every single baby born. It is actually an excuse for the banksters to, you know, create money digitally and in printing form and so on. So first of all, and first of all, it's an inner standing. Ha, huh. okay, who, who am I then? Well, if I am the source of my realm, then I am the God of my reality. I am the highest operating force. I'm the highest authority here. Yes. And so imagine this. We've been light about three things deeply. God, sex, and money. Yes, we've been taught that sex is only something, you know, people do in the bedroom. In reality, sexual energy flows through nature. Yes? And it's basically, the, it's basically light. Yes? When, uh, you know, the best kept secret around, about orgasm is that orgasm actually proves that we are being of light. Yes? Psychedelics, the same thing. Yes, when you get on high, you know that everything is just full of light and vibration and energy and frequency. So is money. And because you are the light, yes, you are not a body. You are not your thoughts and emotions because you can observe them. Yes, you are actually the light firing in the neurons of your body, if the, in the neurons of your brain. Therefore, everything you see, everything you perceive in this, in this world, you are the true you. The I am presence of God within you is actually the, the source, the ground up, the womb of existence. So, you know, if, imagine if you're dreaming a dream, yes, and we know already that this is a simulation or some kind of a dream that we are having. Yes, some kind of an illusion. It's a fake world that we can actually now take this technology and create an experience that we choose, right? We can take over this, this, this holographic illusion. So if it is a dream, right? If I am dreaming a dream, then I may see people inside this dream. I may see money inside that dream, right? Trains, cars, and so on yet they are all inside me somehow because when i wake up in the morning what well, where was it was it outside of me or inside me inside right i am an infinite being or i am the force i am the infinite force within me so i am the force that permeates through reality it, perme it it's the force that moves leaves on the trees that grows trees it, it's the force that moves waves on the ocean yeah, and that is who I truly am. And that therefore, what else? I am money. Just as well. Right? If if you are if you are just another I am, and everything is the source, everything is the light, God, call it whatever you want, playing here, knowing itself, yeah, then therefore God is money as well. Love is money as well. Life is money as well. So do not separate yourself from money and know that deep inside you create out of nothing. You do not create money out of, out of effort, even though it looks that way. You create money out of nothing. And from nothing, it, cre it becomes something. So your heart, your heart has an ability to, to perceive energy potential. You can feel a business opportunity, yes? You can feel that certain things will most likely pan out really well and certain things just won't work, right? So tap into what you feel because your heart really knows. It is super intelligent, yeah? Your brain, on the other hand, can perceive with, ear, with eyes, ears, and so on. And your, your brain only observes how what you have created what is the actualized potential it's done yeah 
the heart can see possibilities, can feel possibilities, and can decide that would be fun. Yes, the heart can feel, oh, you know, ima in, and the imagination comes up, oh, that would be cool. Yes, so you can choose on the level of the heart. Yes, from infinite to infinite possibilities. And your choice will create money for you. Yes, so let's say, for example, let's say we choose, oh, I'm going to go on vacation to Hawaii. Yeah, I choose. And let's say we choose as a, as a you know, family, a group of people together. All of a sudden, you know what happens? If you really, really choose it, boom, you will see an invitation to Hawaii is going to appear in your holographic experience. You will see an ad somewhere on Facebook, travel to Hawaii. A friend will call you. A friend will come back from, oh, you just, oh wow, I just had an amazing trip and so, so on. the coincidences. There will be synchronicities, synchronicities guiding you to Hawaii. And all of a sudden, if you really choose that this is what you choose, this you focus there, mm. the same way that energy of your passion, that energy of your choice will 3D print money for you. Okay? You know, the human body is the, the greatest technology that is on earth. The carbon body, 666, it's, car it's six, six protons, six neutrons, six electrons that are, you know, forming, that are creating the human flesh, the organic body. Now imagine that. Any other technology than we see is actually a, a replica of an aspect. It's an externalized uh, replica of an aspect of human body's ability. So when you look at 3D printer, look at, look at technology. What is 3D printer doing? It's what? It's laser, laser focused attention and it prints matter. Yeah? What do you think your pineal is doing? Exactly the same thing. Your pineal gland, when you focus, you, see, you, see, you perceive the world as material, ma matter. So you perceive the, the universe as light particles. And they form furniture for you, cars, mm. you know, uh, hands, uh, animals, and everything. Yeah. Mm. So you have different dimensional abilities to perceive reality. You can drop into your heart and perceive it as if energy potential, a field, quantum waves. Here, when you are in the space of the heart, you will feel infinite, like an ocean of light. That's why Bruce Lee said. When Bruce Lee was asked, what's the secret of your success? I mean, you came out of nothing from China, right? From, you know, it was Hong Kong actually, yes? And, you know, you became so successful in America. What's the, what's the secret of your, of your success? Bruce Lee said, be water, my friend, be water. So he basically was, was inviting you, drop into the space of your heart and choose there from infinite possibilities. Ask for impossible Yes, and then watch how the impossible things allow change, allow in, with your eyes, with your senses, surrender and let the hologram around you spin as you are time traveling into the location in quantum, quantum field where you will experience what you have chosen. Mm. Yeah, and that all those changes that need to happen, maybe you need to stop at the traffic and you know, be late to work. Because, you know, when you, when you, maybe at the traffic jam, boom, there is a, there's some kind of an accident. You will meet someone that will, boom, later on you go for a cup of coffee and that person will guide you to the biggest entrepreneurship or poss possibility or maybe we will become the love of your life. Mm. You have no idea. So it's a relax and be allowing for change while in the same time, eyes on the prize. You already hold End state, it's done. I'm already in Hawaii. I'm enjoying. I know I'm going there. Yeah, I'm. I'm enjoying it already. Wow, it's gonna be so fun, mm -hmm. right? You're already thrilled, and that passion within you unfolds at, at like a quantum tunnel of of such synchronicities that you will be amazed at the ease with which this carpet of miracle flows. Money shows up on the way. It's one of the many things that show up. So this is so important that you have to know it, right? You have to like really know it, not even believe it, but knowing. That's knowing. right. Yeah, that's right. We three D printed. We we are three D printing matter, therefore money as well, right? Because it's paper or some kind of you know phenomena on the screen, which is material. So we're three D printing matter instantly from what we know is real. 
from what we know is true. So what we have decided that, yeah, I'm going to Hawaii. Of course, sure, totally, let's go, boom, right? So of course, some action, you walk towards it knowing that it's real, yeah? And manifestation actually happens from assumption. There is a law of assumption. So you assume money is going to show up, yes? So it shows up. If you assume it's not going to show up, it's not going to show up, right? So examine your assumptions. How Choose the ones that actually serve you, yeah? And manifestation is so instant, yes? We, we, were, we are actually lucky when it's delayed, so we can actually decide, eh, I don't really want to go to Hawaii, for example. Maybe I'll go to Turkey, mm -hmm. yes? But most of the time, 99% it, of times, it's so fast that, for example, when I'm looking here, I assume... I assume that there is a yellow wall behind me, right? I turn around, there is a yellow wall, yes? In reality, from quantum perspective, yes, there is nothing. It's just white light. If you see, it's just energy potential, yeah? So I am assuming my world into being. We human beings are divine God beings. We create a universe for all other beings, such as cats, <laughs> for example, for all other beings to exist in those universes. We're magical, yeah? And now think about it this way. If I, if I am affirming, like we were told in New Age movement, affirmations, affirmations, repeat these affirmations, write them down and so on. Fine, they do work to a certain degree. If you are congruent, if you have integrity, that you, you also assume that it's real, right? So for example, if I am assuming, if I am affirming, I am wealthy, I am abundant, I am rich, whatever you're writing down, yes, da da da, all these affirmations. And then I, I in the same time, I assume that I'm not going to be able to pay the bills. Mm. Then there is lack of integrity. It's out of alignment, right? Because what I know is real, it's, it's different. And what I'm actually repeating to myself, like a kid in a school, mm -hmm. okay? It's, it's completely different things, yes? So examine your deep assumptions, the rules of this video game. You make them here, yeah? And one time there was, one time there, I was in a situation where I had no money. I was broke. I mean, we all were there, have, have been there, right? And maybe you are, you're watching this video. Maybe you are broke as well right now, right? So uh, in that moment, I would, my situation was so pathetic. I wasn't even able to pay for the phone. I was sleeping on the sofa of, in, of my friend's house. And it was like, gosh, you know. And I was begging my guides, my guardian angels, like, please help me to pay the phone. You know, please, please, meow, meow, meow. <laughs> and so on. And you know, the, the, the awareness that came through was, do not ask us, your majesty. Do not ask us to survive. Mm. You know this very well how to survive. Ask us, please, Your Majesty, request impossible things. Because when we, we will rush to fulfill the impossible for you, to bring you miracles out of your logical, rational, you know, survival mind, yes? Once we bring you, once we deliver ma ma miracles and amaze you, you will trust us more. And you will know you're never alone. You will know that you are the royal, your quantum majesty and the kingdom rushes at your service. So you are unconditionally obeyed in the quantum kingdom. You're the highest authority. You're the highest, the, 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 the most high. Yeah, the, the God within you, the divine, your I am presence. So whatever you say after I am, so it becomes. Yeah? So you create reality, you create money, for example, anything, clothes, cars, experiences for yourself, yes? Mm -hmm. Based on what you, who you say you are, mm -hmm. who you think you are, yes? On your self-concept, self-definition, self-definition. So if I assume I am the source of wealth, I am an infinite abundance, yeah? Then I'm going to have a likewise confirmation of that, a flow of an. If I assume money shows up effortlessly out of unpredictable sources, in unpredictable ways, I expand my consciousness and I allow. Yes? If I assume money shows up only out of my effort, 
nine to five and then I have a paycheck and this is the only money that can show up, so it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah? It's uh, difficult in those days. Uh, I can imagine from other people how they live that they live in a little bit with the fear. They affirmating, yes, I am, I have, you know, yeah. everything, but back in the head it's like, yeah, yeah, but I have to still pay my mortgage. Oh, you know, oh, yes. I have to save. So this is so important to remove the fear. Yeah, and remove trust. the word, remove, remove vocabulary. Mm. I have to, mm. I cannot, I need to, I must. Examine, especially I have to. Who says you have to? You are, the. this is your life. It's, you own it. This is your world, your private world of your senses is your bubble of reality. You have a different bubble than I have, than, than Iki has, even the different bubble than this cat has, right? So there is nobody that has authority to tell you you have to unless you volunteer, unless you give consent. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. all this stuff like paying taxes, when you really examine this according to common law, completely voluntary. Mm -hmm. So it is you decide if you bow down to outside authority and bring your income there. All right, it's common law, you can verify this. Yeah, in the legal system, which is anti Christ, yeah, the common law, divine law, natural law has been created uh, to protect the Christ, the, the station of Christ, the Christ within every individual, knowing that it is the individual who is the highest, uh, the highest treasure, the most important, the, the most important minority to protect is the individual. Yes. So, you know, it's what I'm sharing here is both on the level of quantum as well as on the level of what's lawful. What is lawful? And, and what is legal, yes? The stuff that are, that are legal in this world, like, you know, mortgages and debts and so on, and the idea that you have to pay them back, if you really examine in the legal system, money is created out of you because you are the source of your reality. Mm. Okay, so... That was very nice end of this conversation. I hope you enjoy. Yes. I, if you'd like to add some comments and tell us your story, how is your life? And if you need any booster of the reality, just uh, get in yeah. touch with Evita yeah. and Feel she will contact exactly, us. Exactly, we will motivate yeah. you. We, we're living this way. We're living the way of freedom. Uh, we're manifesting, actually. Right. Yes. We're manifesting. We attract. Yes. You know, we attract. And uh, I also live... Uh, in this type of freedom. How long, how long have you li lived without a job nine to five? Oh, so this is from 2015. I decide to get yes. out of the system. And uh, always when I need money, I just manifest and then some projects coming. So I work on yes. the projects at the moment. That's right. And I travel the world and it's always enough. I live in the abundance. So yeah. And it's not always just papers that shows up, right? Or numbers on the Food bank. Food is the money. Food is Accommodation value. is the money. That's right. Sometimes and somebody... Somebody would basically, I remember, you know, several times somebody said, hey, listen, you know, do you want a house sit here? Or would you like to stay in this house? It stands empty. You know, my, my aunt left and so on. Boom. That is money because I don't have to pay rent, right? So it's value, mm -hmm. you know? Sometimes uh, oh, I remember when, oh, this is, maybe I'll share something else because it's funny, okay? Mm -hmm. The fastest way to create reality is complaining, Okay. You can complain and complain, and the more you... Co Why complaining? Because it's words, sound, sound ripples, vibrations, free, uh, ripples, vibration on the quantum field, on the water of your quantum field, yes? So what you say, yeah? Thought, of course, before you speak, you have thought before you complain, so you mm -hmm. think a lot, like, oh, shit, why is this happening to me, right? Why again, da, da, da. And also, and there's a lot of emotions when we complain, Right? So now think about it this way. You can say, why do I not have money? Why am I broke? Why, why am I getting all these bill, bills and so on, right? Or how am I going to do this? Blah, 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 right? You can worry and worry yourself to freaking bankruptcy if you really want. Because it's a down spiral energy. It's like toilet, mm -hmm. right? So now I encourage you to look at the, the mind as if it is a blender. Yes, you know, like Vitamix. It's not a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> So you have a blender 
and you throw bananas inside, blueberries, some, you know, raw cacao, almond milk, whatever, yes? And then you spin, yeah? So I would like that, uh, you know, what I discovered, very fast way to manifest money, out of create money, out of nothing, is to why the money into being. So for example, I would, I decide what, what I complain about. So I started to complain creatively. Like for example, I would say to, to myself, when I didn't have money, I would say to myself, my goodness, wow, why is money coming to me through doors and windows? Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, okay. Like, mm -hmm. what, why so much money is showing up? Like, what's happening? Mm -hmm. You know? Or I would create clients out of nothing. Like, I would say, wow, why so many, so many clients, so many people come to me from all over the world mm -hmm. for retreats. Mm -hmm. Like, this is insane. Where am I going to host them? Yes? Or I would say, oh gosh, so many people booked me for individual sessions. I was like, well, how am I going to find time? There's so, do you see this? It all translates into cash flow, obviously, right? Now, if I have bills, yes, then it's like, wow, why is this bill paid already? I hold it. Let's say I have to pay electricity. Yes, mm -hmm. I have to. I don't have to. I choose to pay electricity. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. because I gave my word. There's an agreement and I choose to honor my agreement. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get up and go to work nine to five. You choose to get up and, go mm -hmm. and stay in that mind of in that mindset of sovereign choice mm -hmm. and you will see how in every time when you choose consciously it will expand and give you more power rather than feeling disempowered right mm -hmm. so why is money coming to me from unpredictable sources amazing yeah why is it growing on I, trees once uh, once yeah? i uh, listened to the interview of jim carrey and yeah before he become a very very rich of his movie he was writing on on the check for himself that he is uh, 50 millions he get the project nice. he was not famous at all on that time nice and then he get this very big contract and he made this money but he put himself already in the reality that existed that he that's what happened so nice. it's very important to nice. go beyond now yeah. imagine the future you are out of time exactly when you time create. doesn't exist exactly in quantum film field time doesn't exist yes mm -hmm. you know we were t we went through a lot in 3d Right? The 3D life, it was like, whoa, roller coaster, right? What a thrill. So uh, what if things didn't happen to me, but happened for me? Yes. What if things didn't happen to you, but happened for you? What if you would flip it? Because you decide how you interpret events in your life. Yes, you cannot live life happily and powerfully when someone else will interpret events in your life so if you experience abuse do not allow psychology society to decide what it means you t you take the situation into your hands and you can decide either someone was uh, working for you or against you this happened against you or for you so you are powerful that in that sense your majesty okay because this is your reality, your realm. It does not belong to society. So even if you are abused, you can, if, if you are abused, you can choose to harness tremendous source of power, tremendous source of wisdom, vigilance, yes, L lessons of life, source of strength out of those negative events. Yeah. And in the same time, when you transmute them, when you radically forgive, and how do you know you're radically forgiven? How do you know you have forgiven when you're grateful that it happened? Okay. You, uh, forgiveness is not some, some feeling like in the church, they taught us that in you know, religion teaches, you just forgive your brother and sister, you know, nah, nah, and you know, we, you, you, you move on, right. Or psychology, you know, you need to move on. We'll give you some Prozac and, you know, and that's it. You forgive. No, for radical forgiveness, true forgiveness is when you are absolutely grateful. You assume it happened for you. Mm. Okay. And how do you do this? Well, let me share with you a story. Okay. I believe that there is a lot of wisdom and truth is actually in fairy tales. Truth is in science fiction. So I'm a big, big lover of movies and fairy tales in order to, uh, to understand our true reality. Yes. So let me share with you a story, a fairy tale. Perfect. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. There was once a king, a powerful royal, a powerful monarch, 
and he lived in a beautiful palace. He was surrounded by servants and knights and, you know, court ladies and courtiers. And he, he, he had all the abundance and food and luxury. And at, some, at, one, po at one moment of his life, he the king decided, you know what, I'm going to venture out of the palace and I would like to see how people live life. How is life for my beloved, for, for my people in outside of this luxury? Is the kingdom ruled really well? Yes, because I am a just ruler. I, would, I need to investigate. I need to go and collect data. I need to go and observe, witness. And in order for that trip to be real and, and like accurate, the king decided that he's going to take, uh, he's going to wear the clothes of a beggar and intermingle with the peasants, inter intermingle with people on the streets. Yeah. And the king decided he's going to become a miner, a school teacher. He even decided that he's going to incarnate into different life stories and bodies, male and female, maybe even animals, right? And he's going to observe how the kingdom functions. How is it really ruled on his behalf? And, you know, when he's when his beloved, his beloved courtiers and the knights, the, all his closest friends, closest companions in the palace, his family, when they notice that he decides to leave the, leave the kingdom, leave the palace, then, you know, everybody was like shocked, right? And they brought the clothes of a beggar to the king and they watched how he takes off his uh, insignia, his crown, his, uh, his staff and you know, he, all his jewelry, his purple cape and so on. And with utter dismay, they were staring at the king and wondering, my goodness, what if something happens to him? What if he, you know, what if he gets killed out there, right? What if, what if somebody would, you know, give him alcohol or drugs and he might not come back? What if he falls in love with a woman and he will forget that he's got the kingdom to rule, right? So the, 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 his most loyal servants surrounded him and they said, Your Majesty, uh, we deeply admire your desire to leave, leave the palace, but please allow us to go with you, you know, to look after you. I mean, the kingdom cannot be unruled. You know, we can, you cannot just abandon the throne and just, you know, leave us. And the king responded, he said, you know, it's this experience, this journey that I'm undertaking would not be real if you, you know, if I take with me the entire entourage. Yes, the moment I walk through villages and cities with all the, you know, all the knights and all, all of you, my dear beloved servants, everybody is going to see I am the king and they will be acting in a very different manner. Yes. So then the, his, his servants scratched their head and they were like, hmm, what if we would also wear clothes of a beggar? What if we would also assume some kind of a disguise and, and follow along with you and watch over you just in case if you forget who you truly are, we would bring you back to the kingdom and we would remind you about your majesty and your power and your authority, your majesty. And the king thought, that is wisdom, that is a good idea. And before he left, he, he ordered to give him beautiful uh, like parchment paper scrolls. He took an, an ink pen and he wrote decrees. He decreed and declared authority upon selected closest servants, upon his most beloved chosen angels okay you have the authority to appear in disguise when i'm there and if you need to remind me who i am in the event if i forget if i would lose myself somewhere there you have the authority to do whatever it takes to bring me back to the kingdom and restore me here on the throne of glory and so that i remember who i am and I rule with justice 
and love. So the, the, the king wrote personal decrees for every single chosen servant, most beloved, loyal servant. He wrote, he authorized court ladies, knights, ministers, uh, his childhood friends, and so on. And then he ventured. And he ventured and he left. Yes, and you know very well that the divine in you, the king of kings that is within you, looking through your eyes and listening to the story through your ears, is now remembering who he truly is. So now is the time when we, as hum human beings, divine beings, return back to the kingdom. When you sit on the throne and you remember that you are the source, you can look, you can be out of time in the now and see all your past lives yes, displayed around you as if those were the incarnations of that majestic king. And you can look at your last life and you will see that the last life on earth, the one that you currently embody, yes, the one that you currently live in. And you can even see the persona you pre you're pretending to be, you're playing as that avatar, and you can see all the shit you experienced as a child and relationships and all this trauma, drama, abuse, and so on. And you remember now that those were your most trusted servants that were authorized by you, Majesty, to do whatever it takes. If they needed to tie you up and put you on a horse and bring you back to the kingdom, so they did. If they needed to pull your hair okay, and shake up and shake you up to remind you who you truly are, that pressure, that pain you experienced created who you are now. You see, charcoal, human body, flesh is, was made out of carbon, six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. When you put carbon, you put charcoal deep in the earth and there is pressure, it becomes diamond. Yes, so this is who you are, especially now as I'm speaking to star seeds. You see, they buried us in the ground. We went through a lot of hell here. Yes, we chose pathological families, we chose a rapid core, core course, cr crash course, crash course on how matrix functions. We incarnated here into some crazy life situations because we needed data. We needed to know what, what is going on on earth. Because now when we are creating new earth, when that old world is collapsing with a lot of boom, a lot of noise, there is a new earth, new world that we are visioning already and connecting with each other and co-creating, right? And that in that new earth, we're never going to allow the same stuff to happen. We will not settle for less. We are not going to walk off the throne of our authority and give up power. Okay, so this is the part of the story. Yes. The part of the story because the story will continue and will say, like, how do you deal with these people? Yes. To remove these uh, bad experiences from your life. Because yes. each of the servant is for this to make us our life difficult here at the moment or in the past lives. This uh, most likely they are the ones who are the more difficult for us. Yes, they've the done their who, job. They've done their job. They hurt us, they abuse us, they uh, lied. lied to us. Cheated. Everything. Yes. But this is now the key. Yes. We know, I think you already told us in the past, in the yes. past uh, interview, like, yeah, how to bring these people to your front. Yes. And how to forgive them. This is the radical forgiveness. Yes. And then you can really make this all beautiful work with them yes. on your quantum level, because quantum majesty, she knows how to deal on the magical level. So, yes, uh, thank you very much for the listening the story and thank you very much for sharing the story. Yes. So if someone works for you mm -hmm. and turns out, if you can, you can choose to assume they worked for you, right? You can choose to remember who you are, who you truly are, and you can choose to assume that, yes, somewhere in the Akashic records, I have decreed and declared authority upon that that loyal servant of mine to go and hurt me. Mm. I sent my chosen angels to appear as demons in my life mm -hmm. because I needed to return 
for my ascension. I have created, I've designed that simulation with all those actors for my ascension. So I would awaken now and remember in this day on, on earth that I would remember who I truly am. Now ask yourself, who would you be today without your trauma? Mm -hmm. Would you even wake up? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Write your comments. Uh, who? Yes. Who would you be? Would you even wake up? Exactly. Okay, so would you like to add anything else to that? Just remember, how do you know you, you have forgiven when you are grateful? So harness, transmutation is all about harnessing, looking authentically at all the shit you experienced and heart, harnessing all the wisdom, all the, all the, you know, everything, all the strength that is now today, now, present within you. And if someone works for you, well, what do they deserve? Gratitude. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. So if you would like to go through the radical forgiveness through Evita, just get in touch. Yep. Thank you very much. <laughs>